Hey, it's Dennis Gray, show number 66 of the Australian Rock Show. Yeah, I know, it's been some time since the last show. What can I say? Life gets in the way, is that the saying? Anyway, the microphone is back out and plugged in. Our license to legally play Australian music has just been renewed. The computer has had a revamp. I reckon we are good to go for the rest of the year. But before we get into it, I do want to let everyone know that we have recently set up a comment line, which is a great way for you guys to dial in and get involved. Share your thoughts on the podcast, request a song maybe, tell us about a new band you may have unearthed. Hell, just get on the phone and say good day, and we'll air your comment on an upcoming episode. The comment line number can be located at australianrockshow.com, but if you want to put it straight into your iPhone, Android or Skype address book now. The number is 047 845 0747. Once again, the number is 047 845 0747. For those listening in from outside of Australia, the number is plus 61 47 845 0747. Righto, let's kick off with some brand spanking new material from a friend of ours who has quite recently released a new EP with the Norwegian outfit Barbed Wire. I'm referring to Dave Evans. Got a hold of Dave and had a good chat a couple of days back. But before we get into that, why don't we hear some new tunage lifted off the EP titled Wild. This is Dave Evans and Barbed Wire with the track Queen of the Night. Dave Evans, it's uh, Dennis Gray. Welcome back to the Australian Rock Show. How are you? Yeah, good, Dennis. Uh, Nice to speak with you again. Great to have you back on the show. Look, mate, the uh, the main reason for calling you uh, is your recent release with Norwegian outfit Barbed Wire. But before we get into that, I must say how lucky I, along with many others, feel that in 2017, mate, we have new loud material from Dave Evans to sink our teeth into. Decades since I first listened to that um, self-titled cassette by Rabbit, I still get to hear your brand of rock and roll. It's a pretty cool thing. Well, thanks, Dennis. Um, yeah, it's sort of almost like a lost art these days, um, writing this this uh, kind of material. Um, and uh, it was fantastic because I've I've toured with the Barb Wire Boys, the Norwegian Boys, quite a few times there in uh, Norway and Sweden. And um, they are big fans of Aussie rock, and uh, they're they've got their own CDs, uh, their own albums out, and uh, very much influenced by Aussie rock. So. Uh, obviously, we got we got on great together, and um, we also became very very good friends. And um, I had recorded with other people, uh, other than my own material uh, as well. Like I, in Texas, I uh, recorded with uh, Texas uh, blues rock legend John Nitzinger uh, over there. I did an album of his his songs. He asked me if I'd do uh, uh, an album of his songs, which is you know, I was very privileged to to do. That you know, that album's called Revenge, and uh, that's had five out of five stars reviews around the world, one ten out of ten. It's a, it's a, an amazing album. Um, so the boys said, "Well, look, you know, why don't we get together and uh, do something together? You know, if, when you're over here again." And uh, we'd been, we'd spoken about this for for a couple of years. And um, last year I, I was touring in Scandinavia uh, again, and uh, so it was an opportune time for us to uh, to get together. And uh, we went into the studio and uh, we recorded the. Uh, the four-track EP, Wild. And uh, uh, one of the songs on there is pretty special as well. Um, we were talking about doing a 12-bar rocker because you know you can't go wrong if you want to do a 12-bar rock and roll song. It it's always goes over great. And I hadn't done it in my set for a long, long time. And uh, we were talking about writing a new one. And then I remembered a song I, that I used to do that I, I wrote way back uh, with ACDC um, uh, called Sunset Strip. And uh, we used to do it all the time, and uh, we were going to record it for our first album because we'd already recorded quite a few songs for the first album before I split and Bon Scott joined. And um, uh, he re-recorded some of the songs that I'd already recorded with them. But the song Sunset Strip we were going to do, and uh, ACDC actually recorded the same arrangement, uh, but Bon Scott changed the lyrics and called it Show Business. So Sunset Strip never never got to see the light of day. Um, so I said to the boys in Barbed Wire, listen, I'd love to do a rearrangement of uh, Sunset Strip and finally record the song, you know, um, which we did. And uh, so I just rearranged the music 
and most of the lyrics that I'd, I'd written and the melody, of course, that, that I'd written for the song uh, remains the same. So uh, Sunset Strip is also one of the songs on the uh, Wild uh, EP, uh, so it makes it pretty special in that regards as well. It is, and if we if I can talk about barbed wire for a moment, so you've known those guys for some years now. They all seem like, as you mentioned, they're schooled on the right kind of rock and roll. You know, uh, yep. their biography lists ACDC, Motorhead, and Chuck Berry importantly as an influence. No complaints there, but yep. I reckon they're a pretty good match for you. Uh, look, as I say, we got on like house on fire immediately you know, a few years ago when we first got together. And uh, as I said, they love Aussie rock. They know all about Aussie rock, and uh, uh, they're very much influenced, uh, which was great. So they're, they're hard rockers, which is up my alley because that's what I am. And uh, so we got on fantastically well, uh, not only musically but as people. We we have a ball when we're on tour together. You know, it's a laugh a minute, and uh, we get on fantastically well. Which is and, important. Uh, so I've toured in Norway quite a few times now. What uh, what other Australian stuff are they into besides ACDC? Do you remember? Um, yeah, they like the Angels, you know, they like Rose Tattoo and, you know, and Dave Evans, obviously. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, it's Aussie rock. It's the, it's the, the old school, uh, Aussie rock stuff. That's the, the influence of the band. So. Mate, well, Queen of the Night is the song we just played. Got a solid bass run throughout that catchy chorus. Can you recall how Queen of the Night came about? Uh, yeah, uh, it was one of the songs that they'd sort of written in a way, you know, mm. and, um, I liked the sound of it, and uh, they already had the chorus of the song, and the music sort of down. And um, so I listened to it, and um, I just realised that you know we had to write a a good story in the in the verses for that particular one. And um, so I, I, that that particular song, I wrote the uh, the verses for that song to finish it off. So that was a collaboration between myself and them. Okay, so Queen of the Night is a co-write. Yep. Nice. You know, one of the things which I like most uh, about not only Queen of the Night, but indeed all these four tunes is how strong your vocals are sounding. Do you do anything in particular to look after that voice of yours? Some honey, maybe? Um, uh, no, not really. I get as much rest as I can um, when I'm on tour. Um, I sleep as much as I can. Um, rest is all right, mm. but sleep it, it actually repairs your vocal cords when you're actually sleeping. Um, so I'm very disciplined on tour. Um, I don't really party after the shows these days because I've got you know it's that many shows. You've got a different city every night. You've got to get up in the morning, in the bus, go to the next place, do the sound check, do the show, try to get sleep, get up. You know, it's, it's uh, and uh, the thing is, as I've always said, you know, all around the world and. Uh, is to all the boys I work with and have worked with, uh, is that the show must be brilliant. Mm. You know, mm. the show has to be fantastic. Um, it's all about the audience. They pay their money. They come to see you, and uh, you've got to give the best performance of your life every single show you do. So, you know, you don't get like the old days. Everybody used to have a few beers and stuff after, after the shows and that kind of thing. We were a lot younger too back in those days. Um, but yeah, it's got to be disciplined. It's all about the show. It's all about being pr completely professional. Um, so I look after my voice, you know, I don't drink anymore these days. Um, so I'm sober every day. Um, not that I used to drink much anyway, but, um, I get up every day. I feel fit. I go for a run, you know, mm -hmm. I go to the gym, I work out. Um, it's all about the performance. It's all about the people. You know, you give to the people, I'll give back to you. So yeah, I just keep fit and, uh, and I'm mindful that, that every show I do, the vocals have got to be spot on, you know. Just going on from that, Dave, you seem like you keep in pretty good shape these days. How is your health? Um, yeah, I'm rocking hard still. <laughs> every show, uh, just get out there and give give your all, and uh, I just love it. And um, it's um, I'm still rocking hard now. As I say, I'm, I'm fit, I'm... Uh, you know, eat healthy, and it's all about the shows. And you know, I feel great every morning. I wake up, I feel good. I get up and enjoy every single day. You know, because uh, you don't know when it's going to be your last uh, for one reason or another. You know, you don't sure, know. Sure. And um, uh, so, just bloody enjoy it, and uh, and always look forward to tomorrow. You know, you go, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to do this. You always look ahead. You know, so it keeps you young, keeps you fit, uh, keeps you positive, and uh, and. Uh, and let the rock music do the rest, you know. It's a great attitude. Mate, um, before I get off the subject of your voice, I think that a fine example of your vocal range, the strength can be found in a tune like you mentioned before, like Revenge, which you did with John Nitzinger. 
a while back. That's just yeah. one tune which springs yeah. to mind. And if listeners want to start getting into the Dave Evans catalogue, I reckon that the Revenge record is a is a good place to start. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a special record because Johnny, you know, he's a Texas blues rock uh, person and he writes that way. But uh, when we got together, I said, look, Johnny, I'm going to sing these songs the way I sing them. You know, mm. the, I'll mm. interpret your music the way I sing them. And uh, it took one or two songs for Johnny to sort of let go, really, because he was trying to sort of uh, say, it goes this way, goes that way. And uh, and the pr- producer there, too, the engineer, and the, they, they just went, Johnny, let Dave do what he's going to do with them. And he did. And after that, he, he, he got used to it and he loved it. And uh, uh, so it was, it was an excitement every time we go in there to do a new song. Um, it, we didn't know how it was going to end up, you know, but every time we'd finish a song, it was just everybody in the room was just smiles from ear to ear to ear, you know. And Johnny and I actually got on fantastically well. I mean, he's a brilliant performer in his own right. You know, he's a singer, songwriter, a legend. And... Um, uh, he's fa- I've seen him perform. He's just fantastic. So, and we've been on stage together performing. And it's just amazing. You know, it's, it's, the energy and the excitement between the two of us was just fantastic together. So, um, it's just one of those things that worked really well. You know, uh, sometimes you get a combination like that, and it, uh, it's exciting. And uh, and Johnny's just such a talent. You know, he's brilliant. Well, um, as I mentioned, Revenge is a great record to, for uh, listeners to. Uh, to head to if they want to start uh, looking over, you know, some of your recorded work. So you did mention that you did a run of dates with Barb Wire around, um, was it just Norway in, Ju- in June of last year? Yeah, it was, but I'd, I'd just done Finland. I'd just, um, just toured Finland um, with uh, my Finnish badasses, as I call them. And um, there were a great bunch of guys there too, the Finnish boys. <laughs> I saw a couple oh, of bands. Uh, I saw a couple of bands when I was in Oslo in the very early nineties, and the crowd numbers appeared very healthy. What's the Norwegian rock scene like in two thousand and seventeen? Yeah, no, it's great. Same as uh, Finland. Uh, uh, they're, they're rockers. They just love it, you know. And um, uh, I also, as you know, I've been touring in East, Eastern Europe as well, you know. Romania, Ukraine, and those right. places, and they're just packed full of people. They rock. You know, Europe's where it's at, really. Um, United States, I, you know, I live there most of the time when I'm not touring, although at the moment I'm, I'm back in Australia, so I'm enjoying being back home at the moment. Um, but the crowds in the U.S. are not so good for rock, you know. Um, it's, they've, they've really abandoned rock for the last 10 or 15 years over there. Um, so I don't really do a lot of shows over there. Uh, what about one, on some of the uh, any any plans to get on some of those festivals, the the county fairs? Um, see, a lot of a lot of those big big festivals and things in the United States, um, you got to pay you got to pay them mm-hmm. uh, to get on the stage. And I, you know, I said, hey, wait a minute, this pay to play thing. I said, no, you, I said I believe in pay to play. You pay me and I'll play. You know, that's it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, when I got over, there's all these big, you know, big festivals and stuff. And uh, when I first got there, I thought, oh, good, I'll get onto these people. And and uh, it was like, yeah, okay, which stage would you like? What slot? And uh, these are the prices. I uh, so went, beg your pardon. And you've paid uh, your said, dues, no. like like a lot of guys. You've you've more than paid your no, dues. No, so you pick it up uh... your jumper. I'm going where I get paid, mate. So um, you know, you get paid what you're worth. And if you've got to pay to play, you're worth. You're not worth anything. Um, so I don't do those shows at all. I don't do any pay to play uh, crap. So um, they want me, they pay, and then they then they have to um, promote the show. You know, so mm-hmm. that's the way it works. The way it works, it's always worked. If it's anything, anything yeah. worthwhile, so. Just um, I got off track there. We were talking about Norway, and I know in a weird kind of twist of fate, Bard Wire supported the Phil Rudd band in Oslo only a couple of short days back, and it's good to see Phil back on a stage once again. So. The, uh, back to the EP, and I should mention that I very, very nearly played the tune Go Wild, which could be my favourite yeah. track on the thing. Great yeah, lyrics, yeah. great riff. Actually, yeah, there's, some, I love it. there's some really fiery guitar work on there. Quality hard rock, my friend. Love it. How did uh, how did Go Wild come to fruition? Um, well, I needed a new song. <laughs> and uh, I was just sitting around, as I normally do, uh, not really thinking about writing a song, because it's, songs just come to me out of nowhere. I mean, I, I don't even, if, I, if I sit down and think about writing songs, it's like, okay, what am I going to do? Um, when I'm going to write, I don't think about writing. I just hum around the place and blow, and all, all of a sudden, it just come, they come out of nowhere. Like, uh, And I, it just, it just, I started singing it. Um, 
And uh, I thought, I like that. <laughs> and uh, so I, I wrote the song and uh, my melody and the, and the lyrics and that kind of thing. And I, and I had an idea of how I wanted the music to go. And uh, I went over to Otler's place, Otler Stagadal. He's a guitarist. Uh, from Barbed Wire. Great guitar hey, player. Great guitar player. Yeah. And I said to him, listen, I've got this new, a, a new song now. He said, oh, cool. You know, so I started singing it to him. And um, uh, before I even got to my idea of the of what I wanted for the music, he said, what about this riff? <laughs> <laughs> and he just come out this blistering riff. And it just fitted completely yeah. perfectly. And I just had one listen to it and I went, that's it. We got the song, yeah. mate. Blistering is a good uh, a good adjective there, but Dave, the EP, as many folks already know, and which you touched on before, contains a never before recorded version of the very early ACDC tune Sunset Strip, which, as we all know, later morphed into show businesses and was included on the High Voltage album. Now, yeah. have I got the story correct about Sunset Strip? You've you're about to go on stage at a Checkers gig. You don't have enough songs for the set. Mal That's played. It. A 12-bar tune of his during that gig. Yeah. You you pulled out some yeah. lyrics, and after the show, yeah. you wrote permanent lyrics to that tune. Yeah, we didn't have enough songs our first gig at Checkers Nightclub. And, um, and Malcolm just said, hey, you look, just write some uh, titles of songs and stuff down, and uh, look, I'll just start something, you know. And uh, you, Dave, you just come in and make up a song on the stage. I said, cool. Um, okay, that to, to flesh out the night. But I said, look, let's do it like a traditional 12-bar you know, that's just traditional. So let's do one of those, and I'll just write write the song. And uh, so I just put Sunset Strip down. I didn't know, you know. And just during the set, you know, when we sort of were running out of songs and that, I just said, and he's, an, he's a, a 12-bar rocker called Sunset Strip. <laughs> and uh, Mal just played the traditional 12-bar thing, and I just sang the song, you know, on the spot. And uh, it went over great. And it was a 12-bar rocker. And uh, so we kept it in the set. Uh, we always did Sunset Strip. And we were actually going to record it when we were, when we were recording our first the, uh, e, uh, LP. Um, but as I said, I, I split from the band before we'd finished the LP. And, uh, uh, and, and, and Bob Scott came on board and uh, they played the traditional 12-bar thing. And uh, Bob Scott fitted in uh, show business uh, into it. So... So I thought, oh, well, that's sort of lost, you know, Sunset Strip. And I never really thought too much about it until, as I said, I was recording with uh, the boys there late last year, and uh, it just came to mind. I thought, you know, the fans know about Sunset Strip. It's been mm, mm. talked about and, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, and I thought, well, look, the fans know of the original, you know, like, Sunset Strip that we did, and they know it. So I thought, well, look, I'm going to make it into a real song, uh, just rearrange the 12-bar uh, uh, rhythm. And uh, I wrote, the, uh, wrote only a few new lyrics to, to fit in with it. And uh, so Sunset Strip now is a real, real song. So, and it's on so, the Wild uh, EP. It is. And, and those lyrics, from memory, I'm walking with my baby down the Sunset Strip. Now, am I, am I correct? When you uh, penned this, what, early 74, Sunset Boulevard and uh, I guess West Hollywood would have just been places you'd all seen on TV, right? Oh, yeah. Well, it's very famous, as you know. We all knew sure, about sure. it. I'd never been there. Uh, but since then, I have been to the Sunset Strip, and I've been walking down there with my baby, by the way. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'll write the song first and then uh, uh, live the experience later. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, um, by releasing Sunset Strip, you've added effectively another chapter to the ACDC story, ironically one which harks back to the earliest days and you yeah. know, you know, it is it is great twelve bar rock and roll, which makes you want to dance, which really is what good music's all about. So I love that. Yeah, sure is, man. for sure, man. mate. Mate, uh, we're going to close out this interview by airing Sunset Strip, but before we do, can I get your take on what you personally think should be the next move for Angus and ACDC? Is it time to call it quits, or should they go forward with Axel? Well, you know, I really, uh, look, I like the fact that the brand is still out there because that's really all it is these days. It's just the brand. Um, the um, so Angus is the only original member left, and uh, um, a lot of the others are all gone too. Um, you know, if he wants to keep the uh, ACDC brand going, which is he can do because he's still in the band, um, they need to settle on you know a new singer, whether it's going to the Axel or not, and they need to record a new album to make it legitimate. 
that way, ACDC, the brand at Angus, will have a new record out. Uh, they've had that many lineups along the way. ACDC, there was like uh, I was on the third bass player and third drummer the time I left the band. You know, there's been a lot of lineups. Uh, there's there's been uh, four singers now, including Axel. So it's been an evolving situation since the the very original first lineup with myself and the other boys. And if they want to keep the the brand going again with a new lineup, you know, with with uh, Angus, they need to record a new album. And, uh, and see how the, how the fans, you know, take that. When I last had you on the show a couple of years back, you mentioned the possibility of working on a book. Any update or interest from publishers on that project? Um, not really. I, I did flesh out uh, the uh, uh, Tracy for. I've got I've got to take time off really and, and just concentrate on it. It'll take me quite a few months to do that, and it's, I'm still haven't forgotten about it. As I say, I thought of the Tracy. Uh, that I typed out and I've, I've got for the for the for the story of the book and uh, there are uh, publishers out there who have expressed you know, great interest and in all that sort of thing but it's just a matter of sitting down and and doing it and um, and maybe I'll I'll put my mind to it sooner sooner than later. What uh, what do you have planned for the rest of 2017? Any any local gigs? Can I ask? No. What, uh, no, about, what just, about plans? Uh, no. What about plans to head back to the Ukraine? Um. Well, look, at the moment, um, I, I'm heading to uh, – I could be going to Brazil shortly again. I'm not sure. I'm just talking to a new promoter over there um, who is talking about – I mean, it's getting a bit close to June. You better uh, give me some definites uh, for going to Brazil. But um, I will be going to uh, Norway again in August to promote the, uh, the EP, Wild. Um then I'm heading to back to England and Wales and, and Scotland uh, to tour back in the UK again. Um, then off to Germany. I think I'm t- we're talking to the German promoter who wants to meet. I haven't been to Germany for quite a few years now. I'd like to get back there. And uh, and talking to uh, the barbed wire boys after Germany after after that tour to get back to uh, Norway and Sweden again. And and, uh, and after that I'll probably head back to the US. So. I'm sort of having a great time doing not much at all at the moment and loving it, by the way, and because uh, it's going to get real busy uh, very soon. The EP is called Wild. It's by Dave Evans and Barb Wire. Go purchase it online via places like Amazon and iTunes. You can find Dave Evans on Facebook. Mate, great to chat with you again. Keep on doing what you do, as I've said before, because it gives many of us great enjoyment. No, thanks very much, and I really appreciate it. And uh, just like to say uh, a big hi to, you, to your listeners, and uh, as we always say, mate, keep rocking. Dave Evans and Barbed Wire there cranking out some very cool 12-bar tunage on the old ACDC track Sunset Strip, which, as we mentioned, goes way back to the very earliest days of ACDC. Love that. I've always had a lot of time for Dave Evans, so be sure to search out his rock and roll history. Of course, he has cut some amazing hard-edged rock and roll over the years, which you should check out. Okay, we got an iTunes review recently, which I do want to share, and this is from someone called Sydney Blues and Roots, who writes, The best radio show on Australian rock and roll. Always an engaging listen. These guys present a format that is both entertaining and also informative, with lots of great Australian rock and roll thrown in too. Interesting interviews. They have a focus on Australian hard rock, but cover blues, punk, all genres of Oz rock, from the 60s, 70s, and even contemporary stuff too. More people need to know about this show, and it's free too. Wow, thanks, uh, Sydney Blues and Roots, for such a favourable review. Really does mean a lot. You know, there are, there are a lot of uh, podcasts out and about today, and it's satisfying to know that you're digging what we are doing. So thanks again for taking time out to review the show. You too can leave us a show review via iTunes, if that is indeed the way you listen to the podcast. Simply head to australianrockshow.com, click on the Review Us on iTunes link, and go for it. All reviews help improve our ranking and gives us a little more exposure, I hope. Okay. Okay. 